Today I'm going to talk about steaking with a felting technique when making a cardigan by knitting in the round. The purpose of knitting in the round would be that you can knit all the time while you are creating your sweater, which will become a cardigan. And when you're finished, you will cut the sweater down the front where the button band will go. And that way you never have to be purling. You're constantly knitting. And this can be especially helpful when you are doing color work as color work can be a little more challenging when working on the purl side. This is a cardigan that was knit and then steeked. There were false stitches that were put in the middle and that is where you cut when you are ready. And in this design, you can see on the back that the steak stitches, the false stitches were folded over and an interfacing was knit and then sewn down to cover those steak stitches. Many people will also put a ribbon over the steak stitches that are folded over and some people will just tack them down with a little bit of hand sewing. All right, let me show you some steaking. So this is your needle felter and these are extremely sharp which is why they're always covered up with something uh, they something that you have to be really careful with because uh, they are needle sharp and they really could cause some damage if you weren't very careful with those so i have already gone ahead and what i have done is needle felted this armhole with the needle felter and pad and I'll show you what that looks like on the inside. So on the inside, you can see that this is a little bit fuzzy right here. And that's because when this punches through, it pushes the fibers to intermingle and mix. And because this is rustic yarn or non-superwash yarn, that tends to let them grab onto each other. So these are pretty secure now. So when I sew on my arm, which will look something like this, and I'll have these steak stitches folder, folded over, I can, I can put a ribbon there if I want, I can put an interfacing, but what I'll probably just do is I'll just tack that down with some hand sewing, um, and that is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So I did start at the bottom of this sweater felting it right here and you can see where I have felted because you can see that those fibers are all grabbing onto each other now and even right here where I had the ends of of some knitting those are locked right in there but if you take a look right here where I have not felted you can now see that those are not locked into place. So what I do when I'm felting this, and I had a lot of questions on my YouTube channel when I talked about this, which is why I wanted to, to do this little video. What I do is I, is I put this little pad underneath my knitting, and I just fold it over, and I'm gonna be really careful with my other hand that's not felting that it's not going to get in the way and I am just going to go ahead and punch that numerous, numerous times over the steak stitches. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I've done one spot quite a few times. So it actually pushes the fiber into the felting pad and it gets stuck like Velcro. <laughs> So you can really see how those are now locking themselves into place. So I'm going to go ahead and I will felt one of these seams and then I'll show you how I cut it. All right, so I have gone ahead and felted the first part of the steak where my button band will go on my Albertine jacket. And what I am going to do now for safety is take just a piece of cardboard off of a sleeve of a cardboard box 
and I am going to slip that between the layers of my jacket. And this is just going to safeguard me cutting anything underneath that I do not want to cut. I was so afraid of doing steaks when I first started doing this method um, that I took all of the precautions and now I've just gotten in the habit of doing that and it safeguards you against any problems after you have um, felted your steak and, and then gone ahead and cut it. Uh, it makes it really easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut in the center. This is why I like to do the lines for my steak because it makes it really easy for me to see where I'm going to cut. I've seen people do uh, more of a tic-tac-toe pattern um, and that works for them, but I like the stripes because it makes it super easy to see where I'm going to cut. So I have my cardboard behind. Uh, to separate the layers. I've got a small pair of scissors so that I can control my accuracy and I'm just going to go ahead and cut. And it is really very very straightforward. So I've just started to cut that first part and you can see that those stitches are really nicely felted. No need to sew them. They're not going anywhere. Again, this is non-superwash yarn or rustic yarn. I don't think I would trust myself doing this method with a superwash yarn. But it is really fast, it's really easy, and once I did this, I really questioned myself as to why I was so afraid to steak because it really opens a lot of doors and opportunities in your knitting to do things you never thought you would be able to do when you have this uh, steaking uh, technique in place. So if you found this video helpful or useful, uh, you can check out my channel, My Wonderful Knitting Life, for more information uh, about the projects that I'm making and this wonderful garment that I've been working on, the Albertine Jacket by Sitzel Hoivik. Take care, happy knitting, and happy steaking.